happy Tuesday. How is everyone today? I hope you're doing well. Today, we are going to talk about eight different methods for decluttering your house. Um, minimalism is huge, right? Um, people like nice clean spaces with not a lot of knickknacks, not a lot of clutter these days. And um, so for about, I want to say three years maybe, I've been running um, a group on Facebook called Simplify, Becoming a Minimalist. And it originally started because I found minimalism and I wanted to get rid of some things. And um, like my house just felt so cluttered and like it was caving in on me. And so um, I started this group and I invited all my friends and family and I just wanted to have the accountability. Um, and I found that it was so helpful for me, just the concept of it, that I wanted to help my friends and family. So we've grown to almost 800 members from around the world which is crazy when I think about that um, on that Facebook group. So if you want to join, it's just called Simplify-Becoming-A-Minimalist. Um, and right now we're actually going through a 52-week course. I just was like, you know what, we're just going to hit one area every single week um, for a full year and see what that does to our houses. So um, yeah, that's just something fun. So today, like I said, we're going to talk about eight methods for decluttering our houses to just kind of give us freedom. I really think that minimalism and the whole decluttering, um, I don't know, phenomenon, I don't know, but decluttering in general just kind of helps you to free up your space. And for me, what that does is it frees up my mind. Like it gives, I don't have to like clean as much. I don't have to always be moving one thing from one room to another. I felt like I was just constantly doing that, just like moving stuff from one room to another and like it was just too much. So anyway, let's just get started. Good morning, DJ. Woo woo. How are you? Way over in Wisconsin. <laughs> All right, number eight is the four container method. Sounds fun, right? So there's a three container, four container, however you feel like doing it. Um, basically, you're gonna get out four boxes. You're gonna label them trash, giveaway or sell, storage and then like put away so sometimes people will get rid of that fourth put away box and literally just go put their stuff away um but it's up to you how you want to do it so you literally go into a room you just start looking at all of your things and you just decide on the spot are you going to get rid of it by throwing it away are you going to donate or sell it um are you going to put it in storage somewhere far away that you don't see all the time or are you simply gonna hang on to it for everyday type of use and put it away. So that is the first method. Um, I've kind of used that a little bit in my journey with minimalism, um, but I think there's some you know, more fun ones out there and you can use that one kind of in conjunction with some of the others. So for example, the Marie Kondo method is number seven um, and she's super popular over the last couple of years. Uh, she wrote a book called Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up which I have and I've read and it was really, really good and it spurred me into action right away, so I highly recommend it. Um, sh the basics, you guys, are, let's see, you, you literally take everything out and you pick up and hold every single item. Um, so like, I don't even know, you like pick up your highlighter and you ask the question, where is it? Um, does this spark joy in my heart? Well, no, as a matter of fact, it doesn't. Get rid of it, right? Um, no, but that's that's kind of her main method is you pick up every single little thing and um, you hold it, you feel it, or you can wear it if it's like a t-shirt or jeans or whatever. So part of that magic, right? You try it on to see if it even fits you still. <laughs> if it doesn't fit you, get rid of it. You don't need that clutter. You don't need that line around your house. So anyway, um, pick up, touch every little thing, and if you love it, you keep it. If you don't, you get rid of it. Pretty simple. But her book is really good. Um, she breaks down a lot of stuff. Number six, and this was something fun that I did, and these are the first people I found in the minimalism world, and they're called The Minimalists. It's Ryan Nicodemus and Joshua Fields Milburn, um, and they play the, the minimalist game. So what that is, is you're gonna do this for a month and you take on day one 
you get rid of one item. On day two, you get rid of two. Day three, you get rid of three items. So by the 31st of the month, that day, you're getting rid of 31 items. It's You get rid of just around 500 items for the month then. Um, but what I found is that like on day you know, one through 10, you're like, okay, this is easy. Um, but you're often getting rid of more than like, you know, on day one, you're getting rid of like 15 items. Cause you, you just, it's the intention. Like you're looking at the stuff and it just kind of spurs you into the action. Um, but that was my favorite game. I've played that game probably 10 times in my life. Um, and it's just kind of a, a monthly thing that you can follow and just clear some of that clutter out. Um, you'd be surprised at how quickly 500 items can just leave your house. We all have too much excess laying around, so it's, it's pretty easy. Um, number five on our methods list here is also from the minimalists, and it's a packing party. So basically one guy, um, Ryan Nicodemus on there, was like, you know what, I'm just going to pack up all of my belongings. Like he was moving, but he wasn't moving. So he packed everything up. And I think it was like the next 60 days, I want to say maybe 90, he took out stuff from the boxes that he, you know, needed to use, put that stuff away, and that was the only stuff that stayed in his house. He got rid of everything else because it was completely unnecessary in his world. So, like, that's pretty extreme, but you could do that, right? You could grab, like, I'm going to pack up all of my office supplies, and whatever I don't use, I'm going to donate to a school, right? There's, um, you could do it in a little bit more simple ways versus doing your entire house, but it's a pretty good method. I don't know. It's, it seems to really get, uh, the job done, right? All right. Method number four is called the power of one. Um, so this is kind of similar, um, but, um, kind of similar, I guess, to the minimalist game, but you just simply get rid of one thing every single day for however long you feel like it. Um, and you guys, your one thing could be like, oh, I have, for some reason, this piece of plastic has been sitting on my desk for 10 days. I'm going to get rid of it. it. You know, like garbage, right? That's, that's one thing. It's great. Um, to the other token, you could be like, I no longer use the shelf. I'm going to get rid of this big piece of furniture, right? So it's up to you. One day could be something small and simple. Five days later, it could be this big epic thing. So it doesn't matter. It's one thing still leaving your house, and that's what's important. So, number four, the power of one. The third thing you could try is called the closet hanger method. And this was brought to us by my dear friend, Oprah. Um, she, basically what this was is you turn all your hangers in one, one certain way. Like you hang up all your clothes and you turn your hangers like facing you, right? And then as you wear stuff, you hang it back up facing the other direction. So after 30 days or 60 days, whatever set limitation you have, if you're like, I'm going to do this for 60 days and see, um, you do it, whatever has not been touched after those 30, 60 days, you get rid of. Um, even, okay, so what I would say is to try doing this. And even if you're like, even if you don't get rid of your clothes, it, it makes you really look at things and think, and maybe the next time you try it, you'd be ready to get rid of some of those clothes. Um, but quite frankly, if you try stuff on, like for me, I've gotten rid of a ton, like a ton of clothes over the last year, because if I try it on or I'm wearing it, wearing it around, going to the grocery store or whatever, and it, like I'm uncomfortable in it all of a sudden, or just like, I'm like, oh, this like fits weird. I get rid of it because I don't want to wear it. I don't want to wear something that makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't want to wear something that like, you know, is riding up on top of my love handles or something. Like, I just don't want to wear that. It doesn't fit. It's not comfortable. Get rid of it, right? So the closet hanger method, I've done a couple times. It's really fun. I actually, um, I think I have till the end of September, so it's coming up. I still have about six, um, six hangers that are facing the other direction. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I... I'm still kind of partial to a couple of them, so, but I probably will get rid of quite, probably four of those, I would say. I don't wear them. I don't need them. Time to go, right? And it also kind of brings awareness to what you actually have and what you, like, sometimes I didn't even know I had a bunch of these shirts because they were buried in a drawer. They were, you know, shoved way back in the closet, and it's like, if you're doing this, you're paying attention to what it is that's actually in your closet. So it just brings awareness to the things that you own, too. 
It's kind of nice. All right. So this one's called the snap and go method or the timer method. Um, and all you do is you set a timer for, say, 10 minutes and you're, say, in your kitchen and you just go. 10 minutes, go. Um, and you look at all your things and you just start getting rid of stuff. And the intention is in those 10 minutes to just get rid of whatever you can, whatever excess you see, you just get rid of it. Um, the kitchen can be a really easy place I found to start because often we have like 10 soup ladles. I can't, I, I don't think in my adult life I've used a soup ladle. Like why do I need a soup ladle? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you just see it, this stuff sitting there and it's like, okay, we don't need 17 forks. There's only two people that live here. Maybe we can get away with eight instead, right? And just get rid of some of that stuff. So I like the timer method. It's fast action. Um, and that, again, is something you could kind of use with some of these other ones together. So, And then the number one thing, which I don't know if any of you have seen this show on Netflix, but like I'm obsessed with it, and I know a million other people are, but it's called The Home Edit. And I didn't want to be obsessed with it, but I love organization and I love like, yeah, I love clean, nice faces. So um, it's these two women and they have the home edit um, and they basically they like it's called they edit the house. Right. Um, and so they'll go in and they're like, OK, we're working on so and so's pantry today. And when they say edit, they just get rid of things that are expired, the excess. Um, things that aren't used on a daily basis like it all just goes away right and then they organize it and you know make it look pretty and put labels on it and stuff um, but it's for one that show is super fun so if you have a moment just watch a 30 minute um, episode of it it kind of gets you inspired and you're like yeah I'm gonna clean this up and then all of a sudden you want clear bins and labels <laughs> but it's really fun um, so there are my eight methods for decluttering my house. So um, yeah, you guys, if you start decluttering, drop me a line, let me know, and for sure join my Facebook group. It's super fun. Um, like I said, we're going through a 52 week challenge right now. So it's called Simplify Becoming a Minimalist. Um, I hope you have a fantastic Tuesday and I will see you tomorrow morning at eight. Okay, bye.